Lopez. I am a application engineer at Anthropology in Europe, Middle East, and Africa region. And I am very excited to show you today uh, some of the amazing capabilities of our software that will help you design very interesting uh, structure, very interesting mechanical components, not only in a very fun uh, manner, but also way more efficiently. And you'll be able to produce very, very cool uh, parts. So to start with, uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Anthropology. So Anthropology was founded in New York City in, back in 2015. Um, basically, uh, this, the beginning was uh, with the research into implicit modeling, which I'll be explaining what it consists of. Then uh, we launched our first uh, software, which was called Element. It consists of a lattice tool uh, mainly focused on advanced manufacturing. And then um, we started developing Entop platform in the beta uh, version. Basically, uh, this was meant to be a more holistic platform that would integrate design and manufacturing and design automation capabilities. Back then in 2018, we received $3 million uh, from uh, Lockheed Martin. And then in 2019, we officially launched Entop Platform, which is the software that I'll be showing you today, and that you'll see uh, that it can bring a lot of added value to your workflows. And then we raised 20 million from uh, uh, in the Series B from different investors, and Carl Bays, who was the CEO for uh, Autodesk, joined the board of directors. And then uh, this year in 2020 we um, deliver the Entop platform toolkits that allow engineers to design better parts faster. And then we raise $40 million uh, in our Series C. So let's have a better look at what uh, implicit modeling is all about. So yeah, why did Entop platform uh, garner so much interest? Well, uh, here you can see a typical Entop workflow uh, at the very left, you can find a typical component that we have uh, optimized topologically. Then we have added some uh, lightweighting features and texturing features. Then in Entop platform, we have capabilities for simulation. We can check the stress. And then after that, you can see a slice body. So basically, we can export files uh, that are ready for additive manufacturing. And at the right, you can see the manufacturer part at the end, which uh, looks quite um, the same as the design part. So we're talking here about a new approach to modeling, a new uh, mindset, a new way of working that allows you to generate much more complex geometry much more easily. So what's the problem with uh, the previous generation of engineering tools like CAD software? Um, it, it was made back in the day in 1970s is when this kind of technology was developed. And this technology consists of basically intersecting, uh, you know, sketches uh, that you create and then you, you have uh, these, these parts that have faces and edges. And, and when you're intersecting those, you can have problems such as uh, when you change your geometry, you don't have anymore a certain phase or a certain intersection that was there, and you keep on getting these errors. And of course, this technology has been improved over the years, but when we are trying to generate very complex geometry, this is not really a very sustainable manner of uh, designing it. So we need a new approach. And here's where implicit modeling comes into play, which is the core technology of Entop platform. So here uh, we can see a nice comparison of, you know, uh, the, a surface mesh or a cut surface uh, based uh, geometry compared to implicit modeling. So if you look closely, those cut surfaces have lots of edges, lots of uh, faces. And then when we, as I said before, when we change those geometries, uh, we take the risk of breaking our geometry. 
However, in Entop platform, what we do is for each uh, coordinate, we define a field equation, mathematical equation. Don't be afraid by the term mathematical here. It, it's here to make it all very easy for the engineer. So basically, by describing geometry this way, what we can do is basically do very quick modifications of geometry without breaking the model. And then we can iterate in our design. We let the engineer focus on what truly matters, which is getting the design they want instead of uh, taking care of all these difficult, tricky problems that we have with uh, CAD software. So yeah, here literally we can design without boundaries. And I mean this literally because um, a legacy CAD solution, the way we represent geometry is with parametric equations based on surface. Here in NTOP, what we do is we describe the geometry with a volumetric uh, implicit field. That's why we call it implicit representation. So this is an implicit function. And um, the importance of this kind of, geomet the, this kind of uh, geometry representation is you see that already you're intersecting two circles, which is still kind of like a basic um, problem. Uh, when you do that, you can see that defining that intersection becomes very complicated and very uh, tricky. With implicit geometry, this is just a very easy uh, minimum function between circle A and circle B. So if for such a simple example, it gets so tricky already, imagine for way more complex geometry, right? So let's just bear in mind that cut geometry boundary representation is rather complicated to operate with. And here we are making life much easier, much more simple. So let's see how we can apply this technology. So here we can see a what could be a typical optimization problem for this uh, robot arm, and we want to optimize the, the, the blue structure here. So the process we're talking about is we define our design space from CAD, and then we bring it to NTOP, and we carry on a topology optimization. We can convert back to CAD, import it, and then uh, you can easily uh, change the interface geometry so that you can uh, operate with this uh, part in your assembly. So this is what a typical workflow looks like when you work with NTOP. So you bring your uh, part to be optimized, then you uh, optimize it, convert it back to CAD, export it, and then you take into account that you need to reintegrate it in your assembly. So you can just easily intersect your optimized geometry with your uh, assembly requirement. And you can see how that uh, nicely optimized part fits in in the assembly. So here's a quick video just to show you that I'm not lying and that uh, you can perfectly bring it back to CAD. So um, here you can see that extremely optimized part performing as part of the assembly. All right, so let's see some case studies of some cool stuff we've done with Entopology. So uh, this satellite part that is actually flying around the Earth right now, it's somewhere in space. Don't, don't ask me where, but it's somewhere up there. Um, with Entop, we were able to do a mass reduction of 50%. And this is very... Um, interesting especially taking into account that originally the part was made of aluminum and we passed it to Inconel uh, 718 which is much more dense so in spite of that uh, heavier material we were able to save half the weight of the part and since we were using this stiffer material actually the part the part stiffness increased 20 percent so reduced half the weight, increase 20% the stiffness, and the total weight reduction is two pounds. And you might tell me, okay, that's not a lot. Well, this, this part is actually the size of a loaf of bread, let's say. And you know, some of you might, might know that every pound matters in space. Every pound is 20K of uh, price that you save. So in this case, if we saved two pounds, that means that 
we saved 40K when launching to space. And what is the most amazing is this highly uh, uh, topology optimized part and with uh, very advanced uh, architected material features only took six weeks to be flight qualified, which is quite impressive. So this was uh, printed uh, with uh, laser sintering and yeah, launched to space and now it's orbiting around the Earth. If you look a bit more closely, you can see this uh, interesting gyroid structure that the, the, the beams are made of. Um, this kind of uh, structure is very easy to work with in NTOP because of our implicit modeling technique. And um, what is very advantageous about this kind of uh, structure is it has a very nice uh, stiffness to weight ratio. So uh, enabling uh, companies to perform this kind of geometry easily is really a game changer. Let's look at another interesting example. This is a fuel oil heat exchanger from a helicopter. So again, anything that flies, but also for cars is important, as you know. Uh, mass reduction is crucial. And in this case, we were able to uh, reduce the mass of this heat exchanger 40%. And not only that, but we increased the surface area. So in a heat exchanger, it is very important to have a uh, the highest amount of uh, surface area exchange that you can, so that you can increase your efficiency. In this case, for example, you want the oil to not get too hot so that in the lubrication, you don't get uh, problems like cavitation, for example. And then for the fuel, you want to optimize its temperature to reduce uh, fuel consumption. And what is the most amazing is this very complex structure, and I guarantee you this is true, and if some of you try the software later, you'll see that this is totally possible. This was designed in two days, two days. Imagine doing this in CAD software. And then imagine you change something in some parameter or the input geometry, then you would need to redo the work again. But in NTOP platform, we can work with this kind of geometry and do it again and again with reusable workflows in different input geometry. Also, uh, the uh, lifespan of this heat exchanger was increased by five years. This was printed with an EOS machine with aluminum material. Another cool uh, field of application of entopology where it's been very successful is medical devices. So here we have uh, some sort of plateau with uh, some uh, medical uh, parts of different sizes. Uh, this, this comes to what I just said before about reusable workflows. You see that we change the input geometry or we make it bigger or smaller and we can generate the exact same type of structure or in the same geometry, we can iterate between one design and another. And all of these operations are extremely easy with NTOP. So in this case, uh, the material used was titanium and uh, it was printed with a concept laser M2. All right, so um, that's all I wanted to show in terms of uh, introduction to NTOP. And now I'll be uh, jumping to the software. Um, just before jumping to the software, I'd like to let you know that please ask any questions you want in the chat and uh, the 20 last minutes of the presentation, I'll be answering to your questions. All right, so let's jump to the software as promised. So this is uh, the NTOP interface. This is what it looks like. So I'll, I'd like to start with a very simple example just to explain what this is all about. So I'm going to create a simple cube and then I'm going to um, make it a gyroid structure. So you see that I can create that geometry very easily. As I explained previously, geometry is described mathematically for each Z coordinate, you can see that we have those uh, implicit functions working, right? So in this case, this is a, a small cube, but if I increase the size to something crazy, that generates extremely fast. And again, the, there's, we're talking about uh, 10 billion cells here right now. And 
the reason why it is so easy is because working with mathematical fields makes things much more simple, much faster. We're not intersecting any faces, any edges. We're not creating any anything too difficult. It's just a mathematical equation see, being seen in 3D. All right, so that's a very cool uh, example to start with, but at the end of the day, this is just a cube. So why don't we jump to something a bit more relatable, such as a, I don't know, let's say a brake pedal. So I'll be showing some more cool stuff later, but I think to start with, so you get an idea of uh, what is possible to do with the software and uh, how we work with it. I think it's a very good example because everyone understands what a brake pedal is basically. So I brought, I designed this brake pedal geometry in, uh, in SOLIDWORKS and then I brought it to NTOP so you can see that we can operate easily with uh, most CAD software in the market. You can bring a parasolid file, a step file, uh, Fusion 360, Katia, Inventor, Creo, NX, SOLIDWORKS. So once I brought that in, I can start working with this. So for example, uh, here I can identify, this is my design region. Uh, what I want to do is to lightweight this pedal as much as I can and uh, to integrate it within its shell. So when I do that, I can easily separate my shell from my volume to be optimized. So let's do just a quick geometry modification here. So now I'll just be showing the shell. So let's say I'd like to uh, change that shell. I'm going to show you how easy it is to do that. So I just use this offset function here and you see I increase the, the thickness of my shell. I can put any value I want. I can put 10. Maybe this doesn't look very pretty, right? But this is just to show you that even if I put something insane, like 30 millimeters of thickness, it'll give me something extremely weird. But um, at the end of the day, imagine doing this operation in CAD software. It will be so much more slow. Here it's very, very fast and very easy, and we don't break the geometry. The software always gives you something. So managing geometry in an top platform is very easy. Now let's see about those latticing capabilities. So we can uh, easily create those conformal lattices. So you can bring in any surface and then create a lattice that adapts to its shape. So this is very nice. And uh, maybe I want to play with something else. Maybe I want a diamond type or a Kelvin cell. You see, so you can brainstorm very quickly, very efficiently. I can. If I go back to this, for example, and I change the number of divisions per axis, you see those kind of uh, design iterations are very, very fast, very easy to do. So this lattice, now that we have something we like, we can go ahead and change its thickness, for example. So if I come here to the thick lattice, you can see that uh, I can create some thickness. So if I put, for example, two millimeters, I have two millimeters all throughout my lattice. If I change it to five, I'll obtain that. Maybe it's not very pretty, but it's very fast. But let's see uh, some other cool stuff that we can do. So let's say I'd like to create a property where I change my lattice thickness based on the Z direction. I can do that extremely easy with NTOP. So I can create this ramp function and tell it, okay, in the Z axis, I want you to change uh, my thickness from one millimeter to 10 millimeters. Sorry, from the coordinate one to 10, you're going to change my uh, thickness from one millimeter to five millimeters. And then, boom. We obtain that immediately. And you can see how with my Z direction, I changed that uh, uh, lattice thickness. So anything that you can think of can be done in NTOP, any rule. This is just one quick example. But maybe we can use this kind of thing in a smart manner. So let's see something very interesting. So 
Before the presentation today, I ran this quick static analysis in NTOP. So you see, I was pushing the, the brake pedal and then I obtained some uh, stress values, right? So if we put this here. So you can identify, for example, that there's some regions where I have higher stress values, right? All these red and orange regions. So I guess an engineer would say, hey, uh, if I want to lightweight this brake pedal in a smart manner, what I should do is thicken my lattice in those regions where I truly need material and make it thinner elsewhere. Well, in NTOP, you can do that almost immediately. So all you need to do is uh, go ahead and put your uh, thickness here that is based on those stress values. And you see that in those regions where I have higher stress values, I have a thicker lattice. And elsewhere, I have a much thinner lattice so that you keep it lightweight and strong at the same time. And of course, I, if I want to, I can iterate on these values. So maybe I don't want that much thickness. I can go back to three. And those changes are immediately performed. All right, so that's very nice. But now we need to integrate it in our shell. And well, since we work with these mathematical functions to describe geometry, things like Boolean operations are extremely easy to do. So you see that I integrated the lattice in the shell but now there's two problems here. First of all, we have these little bumps here. Maybe we don't like that. We'd like to have a flat, nice, clean shape. And then there's the question of these fillet radiuses here. So imagine creating this in CAD software. You would need to adapt each fillet one by one, and each one will have a different type of intersection because the surface is changing. And that would be a whole nightmare. Well, this kind of operation is almost immediate in NTOP platform. So let's say that I'd like my uh, fillet radius to be two millimeters, as you see, or maybe five millimeters. All I have to do is change that value and I get that immediately. So basically the NTOP platform allows the engineer to focus on what truly matters, which is what design do I want to get? And you're not... Uh, wasting time with all these weird, uh, tricky geometrical problems that you get with CAD software. So it'll allow you to speed up your design process for complex geometry a lot. Anyway, we were, so that's regarding filler radius. And just like I did before with the thickness, if you want to change uh, your filler radius in a direction or something like that, that's possible. We, we just need to use a ramp again. But anyway, I won't be doing that now. Just to show you more cool stuff up after. Um, but now let's get rid of those uh, little bumps. So all we need to do is to intersect our geometry with the initial input geometry. And then in a few seconds, I obtain my nice clean external shape with the fillet radius that I wanted with the thickness increased in the regions of interest where I truly need material. All right. so. I think this example uh, already shows you what working with NTOP platform feels like. Other cool stuff we can do is we can integrate into a manufacturing process very easily. So for example, if I drag this body in, NTOP will provide me with a sliced body. And of course I can change uh, the direction in which I want that slicing to happen. So for example, I can change the plane if you want to print it in a different direction, as you can see. Here I used a layer height way too high, but is this for illustration purposes, for visualization? But of course you could change this to 0.1 or, or 0.06 or something like that, and the software will compute it for you. But let's leave this one for one millimeters. So this is the first example I wanted to show. Just one more comment before jumping to the next thing. Uh, I told you that I ran a static analysis in NTOP. And I'd like to uh, tell you about our uh, simulation capabilities. So if you have a look here, we have uh, static analysis, which is what we've run here. But we also offer model analysis. You can 
calculate natural frequencies and mode shapes. You can also run buckling analysis and also thermal analysis. We have lots of material libraries, and then you can work with isotropic or orthotropic materials, uh, solid elements, beam elements, shell elements. And then uh, what is also very cool is not only we let you to verify your design in NTOP, but then if, for example, you want to run a very advanced simulation, such as crash simulation in some explicit solver, we can do that. So we have this whole exchange module. And for example, we can export a finite element mesh to the main uh, uh, FE software packages, such as Abacus, ANSYS, Nastran, LSDyna, NX, etc. Um, so you can export a mesh, but you can also export a whole static analysis. You can do all your boundary conditions in NTOP, and then you can export your input file directly into your solver. So that basically you don't need to uh, do anything in that software. You prepare everything in NTOP, and then you just run it in your solver of your preference. So basically, that's why we call it NTOP platform. It's a here you can do a design improvement very easily. You can export a mesh or export slices depending on the uh, printing machine that you want to use. And then we can also uh, provide you with simulation to brainstorm uh, your design with analysis. So something I didn't mention yet is here at the left, you can see that I've been working with this uh, sort of like tree. Actually, we call this the notebook. And it's kind of like CAD software tree, but a bit different, actually. So in Entop platform, we like to work by you know putting comments. And, and this makes your workflow nice and clean and easy to use. And then if you share this with someone else, it'll be easy for them to understand what you've been doing. So you can say, here I imported my parts, here I defined the, the design regions, here's where I created a lattice between faces, here's where I ran the simulation, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's very easy for yourself and for others to remember or to understand what's been done in this file. But apart from that, there's something very powerful here, and is we can sort of create design algorithms that automate a painful um, operations, as I'll be showing soon. So if you realize here in this model, I just use the workflow with no input at the top and at output at the bottom. But if I did that, for example, something like this, so you see that I provided some inputs up here. Here is where I have my workflow, and then I have my output at the bottom. And I call this function shell and fill. And then I created another uh, function, another custom block that I called perforation holes normal. And you'll be seeing how powerful this notebook system is and how we can reuse uh, this whole workflow that we have developed over and over again. So let's see that in this quick example. So here I brought this impeller geometry. And let's say I like to lightweight it the solid impeller, I'd like to shell it, fill it with some uh, lattice, and then make some holes here at the bottom face so that I can uh, extract powder when I am uh, doing the additive manufacturing process. So basically, if you look closely here, this custom block here is shell and fill, so you can create your own functions and then reuse them over and over again. And the other one that we have here is perforation holes normal. So I combine these two um, blocks. And then if we look at the result, if I do a cross-section cut, you can see that effectively I shelled my geometry and then I filled it with gyroid structure. And then in combination with the other block, if I do a detailed render here, you can see that I've created all those holes that will allow me to extract the metallic powder from additive manufacturing. So as you see, it's very powerful to create that, but I still haven't shown you everything. So 
let's say that instead of the impeller, remember our brake pedal? Let's do the same operation on the brake pedal. So all I have to do is drag my new input here. And I'm doing it here live for you so that you believe me. <laughs> and uh, just in, we just need to wait a few seconds. And then we can visualize our new geometry. So if I do a cross-section cut, you can see that I have the same operation performed on this completely different geometry. And then I had specified uh, this phase as the phase where I wanted to do those holes, just like I did before. So complete different application, complete different component, but same instructions. So you can automate lots of uh, painful operations that in CAD would take a very long time. Here, this is a matter of seconds. You develop your workflow once, and then you forget about doing it again, ever. So this makes the overall design process much more fun, in my opinion, because no one wants to spend hours shelling or latticing. You just want to see that geometry happening in front of your eyes, and that's what Entop provides. So basically, we can work with geometry very efficiently. And then if you need to integrate that into your CAD software, or if you need to export a mesh, we can do that, as I'll be showing later. But all these geometry operations, when you convert to implicit bodies, it's very, very fast. And really, we can work any geometry. Look at this shell housing. Uh, it's very complex, a very, very uh, complex geometry, as you can see. And I brought those same functions again, that shell and fill and that perforation holds normal. And if I show what the result is, what will we see? Exactly, you guessed it. The same operation again, the shelling with the gyroid. Can you imagine doing this in CAD software? So, I think now you might be getting an understanding of why Entop is really uh, following up this new generation of mechanical part design. Because with CAD software, this kind of operation is just not uh, sustainable. Maybe you could do it once with a lot of effort, but then you change one little thing, you break your whole geometry, and you need to start all over again. And all of that is a problem of the past with Entop. So, and the same, I also, define a phase where I wanted to make those holes. And as you can see, here they are. And of course, you could you know, change, for example, the shell or the type of field type of the lattice or how many holes you want, things like that. So you can change your geometry and your parameters and iterate on your design very, very easily. So I hope that gave you a good overview of uh, the main and top capabilities. So now I'll be showing you a few more examples of what kind of lattice uh, we can create in Entop. So in this quick example, I just want to talk about what kind of lattice we can create. So here's a volume lattice. This is a surface lattice. So if I just show this, so if I just show this surface, you can see that we can adapt to any surface and say, hey, create a lattice that uh, is conformal to that surface. So you see, regarding the volume lattice, so basically you can take this cube and then with any external geometry of any shape, you can trim this and then you have that lattice in, in, inside your volume of any external shape. And then as we saw with the brake pedal, we can take two uh, cut faces and then create a conformal lattice between the two of them. And finally, we have this very cool uh, random lattice type. We call it Voronoi. And uh, this is highly uh, used in medical applications, for example, but it's also used in consumer goods or even in automotive, as I'll be showing after. And even if we call it a random lattice, it's not truly random. We can play with its parameters. We can play with its uh, porous size or its uh, lattice thickness, as I'll be showing you here. So you see here, I change the size. I can change it back to, let's say, five. 
I can change it to 10 and specify in what direction I want those changes to happen. And I can do the same with here, the, the lattice thickness. So I can, you know, put something crazy like five. Maybe it looks a bit weird or maybe it's what you want. It depends on your design intent, but the software will compute it for you, no problem. So again, the focus here is for the designer to decide what features they want and not uh, struggling with uh, geometry intersections and stuff like that. So all these latticing uh, operations can be used in very cool applications. For example, here's a automotive uh, design with this digital foam that you can uh, print uh, with, for example, a EOS machine. So this kind of lattice uh, has very good properties when it comes to uh, crash uh, absorption energy. Uh, so designing this kind of thing conformal to the surface, as you can guess, is something very, very easy to do with NTOP platform. It looks cool and it's actually very, very functional and very useful. Here's another application. So here's this helmet and this head that was scanned. And then we could do this adapted uh, lattice basically. And you can see that it's perfectly conformal to both the surface and the helmet. Here you can see the cross section of that. And we have full control over the properties of this lattice. So, the last example I want to show today very quickly is uh, a automotive structural light weighting. So this is a typical uh, structural intersection that could be in a car, for example. So I have all these loads and constraints coming from all these bars and I like to lightweight in, in uh, this section and still be able to withstand those loads. So in Entop platform, we have a whole topology optimization module. You can set up your topology optimization provide different design responses, stress, volume fraction, displacements. So we can do, you know, our mesh and, and then we can define uh, those nodes where we want to uh, constrain or to apply loads and all these things. We can define those regions that we don't want to change. And at the end of the process, we can obtain a topology optimization like this. So if I just go very quickly, you can see the threshold and how that topology optimization is performed. And then what is very cool in NTOP is, okay, I have this shape now, but I'd like to make it a bit smoother, a bit, you know, uh, I don't like all these little bumps here, all these features. And maybe in other software, you need to sculpt it. You need to, you, you get this, but then you still need to do some manual work around it. But in NTOP, we automate all these kind of things because we are representing geometry mathematically. So we can easily in, do with an interpolation function, a smoothening operation, and then integrate it with the interfaces very quickly. So you see that if I show it with all the interfaces, we have perfectly optimized that part and it's nice, smooth, clean. So we pass from that to that and it's super fast and super easy to work with. But I'm not quite done here yet, actually, we can do more cool stuff with this. So topology optimization, even if it's called like that, uh, even if everyone says optimization, it's not the very last optimization you can do. Here, you have a solid material created everywhere. That's the one uh, constraint of topology optimization. But in NTOP, we can do something like running a static analysis on that part so we can as you can see the deformation here, and then I can get some stress values, right? And then I can, I can further optimize this. So you see that not every region is very loaded. And maybe I would like to, you know, keep material again in those regions where I truly need it and elsewhere 
just shell it or, or fill it with lattices or something like that. So I can do that. As I showed you with the brake pedal previously, I can go ahead and, and do a var variable shelling that keeps material in the regions under stress and removes material elsewhere. So I'll be showing that to you right now. Here we go. So you see, remember those red regions where we had stress? So you see that in the red regions, we keep the material, and in the blue regions, we remove it, where we have low stresses. So we can further lightweight extremely easily in NTOP, a topology optimization. So you, you have the advantages of both worlds, topology optimization and being able to work with geometry using fields, using stress fields. And here I've been talking mostly about stress fields, but you could use anything, thermal fields, CFD fields, any even like experimental data or a CSV file with numbers in it, you can drive your geometry based on that, that data. And then I can even go ahead and, you know, fill that volume with lattices again. And all of that is very fast. So the possibilities are up to you. NTOP is a platform that will provide you with the possibility of doing this very fast and very easily. And you'll have lots of fun with it. You'll be able to do functional design based on uh, actual physical simulation data or test data. And then most importantly, you can integrate it back into your CAD uh, uh, software when it comes to topology optimization. So you can put this uh, power back into CAD, no problem at all. Just one last thing. So here's another topology optimization of this robotic assembly. Uh, so just to show you one more example, and you see that this very complex geometry uh, can be put into a CAD form. And, and again, we could bring this back to CAD, no problem at all. All right, so um, that's all I wanted to show you today. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, just a quick word before the question and answers time. So please fill in this request to, uh, re uh, to get the education license. It'll take you a couple of minutes only. And uh, I guarantee you that this will give you a lot of possibilities to to improve your designs to make a difference in your designs and and uh especially have lots of fun and, and foster your creativity because this multiplies the amount of possibilities so much and don't worry it's kind of a different mindset but the learning curve is quite simple and uh here from the software if you saw that you can go to support and then when, when you have access to the software, you have all this knowledge base with lots of articles, with lots of uh, tutorials, step by step, how to get started. So we give it everything ready for you to learn at your own pace. And in a couple of weeks, you can be designing this kind of stuff very easily. We have lots of training guides and, and videos and, and how to do things. So. I really hope you like the software as much as I do. Um, again, the learning curve, there's a learning curve, but it's not too high and we have uh, lots of material to support you. So again, thank you for your attention today. And again, uh, I'll be answering to some questions now, uh, but if you uh, have any other questions after the presentation that you come up with, just send us an email at education at anthropology.com. Thank you very much. And now I'll be looking at any questions that might be in the chat. All right, so it seems there's no questions for now. Um, please, if anyone has any question, I'll, I'll, I'll be here waiting a little bit, no problem. And if not, you can always send us an email later.
thank you, Alex Carrasco, for uh, for your message. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed the presentation. Is there anything you'd like to see a bit more in detail? I, we have 15 minutes here, so we, we can go through anything that you'd like to uh, in a few minutes here. Uh, thank you, Alain, uh, for uh, your message. No problem. Please contact us anytime, as I said. And, and yeah, we'll be very happy to answer to any questions or to show you any further capabilities. Um, also, uh, a little a quick comment. So you can go to YouTube. And you can do search MCOP Live, for example. And there's lots of videos on several topics that you can watch and learn from. And from all of these videos, you can um, <clears throat> get the files in the description. So when you get the NTOP educational license, you can play with all of these uh, possibilities as well and, and basically get very proficient at the software. And, and uh, yeah, I hope uh, this is also useful for you. So if there's no questions, uh, Natalie, I think maybe you can we can just end it here, I guess.